Don't think my audio is connected. Is anybody hearing me? No, I'm not muted. It's just that it's not connecting the audio. Audio. Plug the speakers in again. I'm gonna plug them in too fast. Uh. Yes, sir. Shouldn't be to sharing. No, we, we should hear them talking right now. If they are talking. Yeah, leave me and go back in. <laughs> Always a fail safe. It's like rebooting everything. It shouldn't be a big deal. Let me in, James. That's the computer audio. Can't do it th that way. Then I guess that we will you get your sound through the phone. You could. Well, it's it's not the best way to. No, it's not. You get a, you uh, have that delay. I don't know why. You, it's like you have no sound coming out of the computer. But I won't have delay. Maybe not. John with computer audio. There we are. There we go. That took a while. <laughs> I had to get the cobwebs out of my computer system here. All right, we are. We are live, I believe, so we will call the special meeting of January 11th, 2021 to, to order. If everyone would uh, please rise where you are for the Pledge of Allegiance. We will get moving. Let's see. There we go. I pledge allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, with one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, justice, and justice. There we go. If we could have a uh, roll call, please. Council Persons Brady? Present on the phone. Dufray? Here. Higgins? Is not here. Ross? Here. Salcedo? Here. Tobin? Here. And Mayor Carnes? Here. All right. Purposes, purpose of this uh, meeting is that. Um, we have a special meeting for the purposes of to present a 10-year road improvement program to be held 
this very evening. So we have a presentation that is going to be put on. I'm book for. Um, so we have Hennessy Engineers here. Um, we have Jim. I'm, I guess I'll start with you if you want to uh, lead things off for us. Joined by Jim Hollingsworth, uh, and also Tiffany Newberg is uh, with us as well. It's uh, running the uh, program. Can everyone hear me well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Well, uh, what we have for you this evening is a uh, a ten year capital improvement program for our roadway network, and uh, we've done this to facilitate uh, essentially a uh, a plan for us to uh, follow over the next 10 years to look at different types of remediation of our roadway system depending on the uh, level of uh, deterioration within the roadways through there and try to outline really ways that we can reach the entire community uh, in, a, in each year with a variety of different project types through there. Um, obviously our number one goal is to uh, maximize our community investment within the roadway program through there. Uh, like all capital improvement programs that are 10-year programs, this is really meant to be a living document, uh, meaning that it should be revisited every year for the, the next two to three years to make sure that um, it's in line with our current budgets that we have in place, uh, budget projections that are made tonight, and with the goals of the community through there. So uh, it's meant to be a living program through there. And the basis of the capital improvement program itself is the uh, PACER study that we've done recently this fall, which is a pavement surface and evaluation rating. It is a uh, MDOT required rating system that rates the roads from 10 to 1, uh, 10 being the best and 1 being uh, complete deterioration, structural failure of the roadway through there. We've looked at uh, four types of roadway rehabilitation. Oh, why don't we go to the first, pro the first slide, Tiffany? Wait, the inner. Tiffany, can you back up? The first slide. All right. Thank you. So there are four types of uh, roadway uh, rehabilitation program projects that we're looking to do. That's remove and construct, reconstruct roads. So that's roads that are completely deteriorated, have a uh, structural failure. Then we have uh, asphalt mill and resurfacing. That's where we mill the roads off. We try to re repair the base uh, where need be, and um, then we resurface it. So those are roads that are kind of nearing the end of their midlife cycle. Uh, removal and re reconstruct, those are roads that have uh, uh, exceeded their life cycle in essence through there. And then we have concrete sectioning, that's where we cut uh, portions of roads that are failing, uh, and those are really meant for uh, road, uh, life, roads that are in midlife. And then lastly, we have uh, joint sealing, and joint sealing is really just to uh, preserve the investment that we've made, roads that are good through there and uh, try to maintain that, um, that a nice rideability that's within the roads that we've uh, put in there. And our second goal is obviously is to marry our roadway and capital improvement program with the replacement of our lead service lines uh, as necessary. So in doing this exercise, uh, we've identified roads that have a high number of lead service leads uh, that need to be uh, addressed, and we will address those uh, with the roadway. Next, I'd like to talk about the funding sources for the capital improvement program that you have here. With the roadway, there's really three types of funding sources. There's the road bond, Act 51, and FAC. FAC stands for Federal Aid Committee. I'm going to go through each one and kind of uh, explain those in a little greater detail for the council and the public. Uh, the road bond 
the community has approved a $20 million roadway infrastructure bonding uh, that is looked to be bonded in three series, uh, 6.7 million, 6.7 million, and lastly, 6.6 .6 million. The first series has been let, and that's 6.7 million, uh, and we're looking to utilize the balance of that bond that we have, approximately two and a half to three million, to uh, uh, for this for our immediate needs uh, for 22, 23, and then we're going to issue another series of bonds, and then lastly we uh, issue in the last series of bonds at 6.6 .6 million. But they average approximately 1.5 million per year can be put forth into the roadway program through there. Uh, Act 51 money, and that's uh, this is the gasoline tax. It's a public act that was started in 1951, and it is really how roadways rehabilitation is thought to be paid more miles you drive, the more gasoline you consume, and the more you pay in taxes. Uh, a problem that has really uh, communities have struggled with, and Lincoln Park is not isolated in this, is that from 1984 to 2016, there was no change in the gasoline tax. It was 18.7 cents per gallon. So obviously our revenues were somewhat locked from 1984 to 2016. Our expenditures increased, so obviously the amount of road work that can be done lessened, and this is what's caused an acceleration of the deterioration of roadways throughout the entire state, to be candid. Uh, in 2017, the gasoline tax rose to 26 cents a gallon, which is uh, nice to see. Just to let you know, neighboring Ohio has 28 cents a gallon for its local tax, its state tax. And finally, in 2022, the tax will be indexed to the CPI inflation. So that tax will increase as inflation increases. But for Act 51, we're averaging, we're starting out with about 1.25 uh, every million per year that we're putting in there. And then we've added in an increase of 3% per year, which averages about 1.5 million per year. Our construction costs are indexed as well at 3%. So they, we have a, we have a, a sliding gradation for the increase of our construction costs at a 3%, which matches that. Then lastly is the FAC, Federal Aid, Community, Federal Aid uh, Committee is what it's referred to. And this is the federal gasoline tax, uh, gasoline tax that comes through the federal government. And in the state of Michigan, uh, there's about, I think about, uh, 18 cents or something like about 10 cents of federal tax dollar of our gasoline tax goes to federal dollars they come back to us and the way that works so the federal government distributes it to the state of michigan the state of michigan keeps 75 percent and then distribute 25 percent to the counties wayne county receives approximately about 16 million a year in this money we uh, Wayne County splits it with local communities and themselves. They keep 50% uh, to handle the roadways uh, that they own. And then they distribute about 50%, which is about $8 million. So we're uh, buying against uh, 43 communities uh, every year for about $8 million. We have been successful, though. Uh, in uh, Emmons was paid for uh, through Federal Aid Committee money. And then we had River Drive is uh, slated for this next year. Uh, the contract was uh, is being awarded at this point through MDOT. Uh, the advantage to Federal Aid Committee money is that and it's an 18.15% match through there. Uh, we do have a couple of potential streets in 24 or 25 that we'll show you uh, that we will pursue Federal Aid Committee funding through that. There's no guarantee, as I said, that we're competing against other communities. Um, as I mentioned, this program is mirrored in with the water main work, and we've got some funding sources for that. We're looking at an average of about $2.7 million per year uh, of funding sources. And this is really predicated off of the capital improvement, the water capital improvement program that uh, Mr. Kazoo presented in the fall. Uh, which outlined approximately $4 million in potential needs through there. 
Uh, our, through this capital improvement program that we've outlined here, uh, we are going to uh, achieve the replacement of an average of 124.5 lead service lines per year. Uh, we need to uh, achieve about 206 as our goal over the 20 year period. So that will leave uh, approximately uh, 81.5 leads uh, per year on an average that still need to be addressed. Um, the water main, uh, there's a little bit more grants available with this uh, than roadways because uh, the only real funding that really is present is the federal aid community. And we've outlined uh, three grants. Um, we've applied for a million dollar grant already um, that looks up to um, for uh, up to three million dollars to uh, for disadvantaged communities that help us inventory our lead lines so that we can be 100% sure of where we're at and also to help update our water mat asset management plan. And it's somewhat similar to the SAW grant that we've just gone through um, through there. Then also we're applying for uh, drinking water infrastructure grants. It's uh, in those grants, uh, we're presenting that at the end of the month and it will pay for up to 30% of project costs up to $2 million. So um, that is some of the grants that we're applying for in the water main system through there. So based on that, this kind of provides a history of what the goals of the program are and the funding mechanisms and the, the average numbers that we're looking. And now we'd like to go through uh, all of our calendar years from uh, 21 to 30 to kind of show you some of the projects that we're looking to entail. So the, the very first thing I want to put everyone to is, is the legend. Uh, and you can see uh, the green is where we're looking to uh, remove and reconstruct and there'll be water main replacements with that. The light blue is um, is a resurfacing. So those are the new uh, projects here there. And then the red uh, dash line is uh, where we'll do street sectioning and then uh, in the uh, yellow area through there it's going to be joint ceiling areas through there and then the purple is, uh, is concrete sectioning areas. For 21 and 22 we have identified exactly what roads we're looking to, to do the sectioning on. In 23 on though we just shade areas because we really can't project, we need to go out there the year before we identify the street sectioning areas to be done through there. And so in 21, uh, we're looking to remove and replace four sections of really Monte and Pagel through there. And um, we're looking to uh, resurface uh, a number of streets, seven mill and resurface seven streets through there, and concrete section three streets, and then the, through the joint ceiling in, as you can see, the northeast and the southwest quadrant through there. The construction costs, you can see, we've got a total of about $2.8 million of uh, construction costs. The water mains, we're replacing approximately 1.75 miles of water main at approximately, and then we're addressing um, a number of uh, lead service leads, over 100 lead service leads. So we're looking at a water cost of about $2.2 million. And again, that was out of the $4 million that was presented originally. Uh, these numbers may come down if we're successful in our grant applications, but we're presenting that tonight. So our total program cost is about $5.1 million for uh, 2021. Now if we go on to 2022, um, we've got um, the same legend that's, uh, that's through there. Uh, you can see though we're taking a little bit different approach. We're looking to uh, uh, do a little bit larger sections of the reconstruction and uh, we've got about half a mile of reconstruction through there and we're looking at LeBlanc for that. And Mill and Phil we're doing Mill and uh, asphalt replacement. We're looking to do two larger sections, two streets through there. Uh, and then the joint ceiling we've got about uh, seven roads in the southwest portion of the community that will be joint sectioning. Again, the numbers are very similar to what we had before. We're averaging about 1.8 miles of water main reconstruction and about $2 million. The road costs are about $2.8 million. Uh, 
with a funding at uh, 5.1 million through there. Uh, that's that's 22 and 23 is a little bit a little bit different in that um, we're looking to do a reconstruction of uh, LeBlanc, and you can see our road costs are a little bit higher than they were. We're doing uh, a little bit more. We're doing a little over 1.8 miles of water main reconstruction, and we're addressing uh, close to 200 uh, lead service leads uh, through there. And um, so that increases that water main cost a little bit for that particular year. It puts us at three million. But you can see in this area here, we identify the concrete uh, sectioning area as the northwest quadrant of the city. As I mentioned before, we really don't have uh, the streets yet because that's uh, approximately three years out from when we started this. So we'll revisit this uh, and we'll update this plan as we go every year for, uh, for the mayor and administration and council through there. But this program year is a little bit larger. It's at about $5.9 million, almost $6 million for that particular uh, contract year. And when we get into 24, uh, very, very similar to that, we're looking to do uh, two roads through the reconstruction through there and uh, two roads for resurfacing. I would like to point out that uh, Champaign, uh, we would be eligible for application of Champaign. There would be a resurfacing uh, project uh, through there and uh, that's looking at Champaign from Dix to Fort Park through there. And that brings our subtotal up to uh, uh, approximately $2.9 million for that. And again, we're averaging about 1.8 million or 1.8 miles of road of, uh, of projects through there. And we're at about $5 million for that particular uh, project year as well through there. And then 25 is uh, similar uh, still. We're looking to do uh, two roads for the reconstructions through there. Um, we are looking to do um, two roads for uh, mill and resurfacing. We are eligible for uh, uh, Harrison from Fort River Drive for um, the uh, Federal Aid Committee. It has just a slight no variation in the color through there, if you see that. And then, um, we are uh, looking to do uh, the concrete sectioning would be in the south east quadrant of the community and then joint ceiling would be throughout the northeast and the southwest. Uh, our budget numbers are again very similar, 2.9 million for the roadway work, uh, 1.8 mile, or excuse me, 2 million for the water main, bringing us up for a total program cost of about $5 million a year through there. And then for 26, we're following obviously very similar. It's about a little bit more of a program year. We're at about $3 million for roadway construction, or excuse me, for the resurfacing. Uh, we've got uh, the reconstructions, um, as they're shown in the green through there. We've got a total road program of $3 million through there. And then, uh, obviously, uh, we're doing about 1.4 million or 1.4 miles of uh, road work through there. Uh, we've got about 2.6 million, so our program is about 5.6 million dollars uh, through there for 26. 27 shows uh, similar, diversifying a little bit where we're doing the reconstructions. Uh, we've got one in the northeast quadrant, excuse me, northwest quadrant, and then the southeast quadrant. We've got um, five streets that we're doing um, uh, mill and resurfacing upon, bringing us our program cost of $3 million. Uh, the water main, again, we're doing over uh, approximately 230 service leads through here and 1.8 miles of road service. That's bringing us to a total of about $3.6 million. So program uh, cost of uh, $6.6 .6 million through there. And one thing I would like to add is that uh, although the, the numbers kind of change between five to $6 million per program year, uh, it's looked to be funded 
uh, the ones that are a little bit higher will be funded from the uh, issuance of the bond, and then we'll pay back, then we'll grab a little bit more from the Act 51 as the later years happen. So that's how that's, and uh, as the numbers I gave you at the, at the front end of the presentation are really the averages that are maintained throughout the 10 year program. And then 2028, uh, we have through there, we have three streets that are being uh, reconstructed through there, and we'll have a total of uh, $3 million in uh, road work through there. We've got, uh, as you can see, some larger sections to be uh, milled and resurfaced through there. Uh, and uh, we've got the water mains where we're doing approximately 80. This particular year, we're doing only 88 service leads that are present within the roadways through there. So obviously, this year, we've got we had close to 200 one year. This year, we're a little bit less at 88 through there. We've got 1.7 miles of road work through there. So we've got a total program cost of $5.7 million through there. And 29 is um, a little bit different. We've got, we're, we looked at smaller uh, reconstructs. And so we've got a total of five streets that we're looking to uh, uh, remove and reconstruct. We've got a couple streets in that same area to resurface through there. Uh, the the uh, concrete sections, obviously, again, in the south uh, west quadrant, and the joint ceiling is in the, uh, in the excuse me, northwest. In the joint ceiling and the concrete section in these later years to address those areas. That's not to mention that if we have to get out of these areas because we have a particular need or emergency, that we're not going to do that. But that's why that's identified in those areas. And then lastly, uh, running on the 2030 year through there, um, we have a total of, uh, we've got two streets that we're looking to, uh, to do a joint ceiling through there. And uh, we might be able to do uh, some FAC money for Abbott, uh, potentially uh, apply for that particular project. Uh, but we're looking at Pagel for that. And we've got a total program roadway program of 3.1 million and then the water funds at 2.7 million and uh, that's at uh, 5.8 million is the total program dollars that we have through there. So uh, as you can see this is a, a kind of a comprehensive look at building a, a roadmap for us, no pun intended, of how we uh, put our, allocate our resources so that we get the uh, greatest bang for our buck and really uh, hope that we can get uh, good pricing with these in the future. Uh, if we can put some of these programs together. Uh, there is talk about um, uh, at, at federal level, we're hearing you know an infrastructure bill potentially. This doesn't take into consideration any of those potential aspects, um, which need, which hopefully would be available to us. Um, but over the 10 year program, uh, we are looking to, it's uh, looking to invest about uh, 29 million um, in the roadway from those three funding sources, about 26 million uh, from the water fund sources, and it's addressing um, a total of about 58 miles of roadway and about 17 miles of water main reconstruction and rehabilitation through there. And uh, I know it's a lot to digest, and we're here to answer, Jim, myself, and Tiffany, any questions uh, the council uh, may have. John, you're looking at, you, you mentioned the, the grant funding that may become available later on. The amount of money that we're still putting into it will be increased by the, by the grants amount, correct? That is correct. That's correct. This, if, this we get, no grants. if we get if we get a one million dollar grant, that just means that's one million dollars of additional um, money that will be going into the roads that that year. That program. That's correct. Okay. Um, the second thing, just as we go through this, if your presentation, if we could get um, something of a that we could display in city hall for people when they they do come back into the building so that we could have uh, something for them that, that we could show them possibly even in the the council chambers for what we propose to do in the next 10 years we 
check the book boards up and kind of identify that in program years so we can maybe group them in years of three so the maps are not it kind of looks overwhelming if you put it all on one particular map well i mean like 10 separate ones is what i was looking for oh, we can do that yeah yeah so that we could then uh, walk people through this as as we get you know a year into the process or two years in the process Certainly. yes yeah. These roads that were chosen that for for the work. You're talking about the the Pizer thing where you went went through and it was all um, you work where you can get the best bang for your buck, I guess. And then coupled with the water um, line things that we that were required to do. But it's who made the final determination on which roads were to be done. Uh, we looked at the basic study as you mentioned, and then we um, tied it to. Um, the water service leads that we are uh, that are known at this point with Mr. Kazoo. So it's through uh, Mr. Kazoo's office and our office that presented this, uh, that made the determination of the roadways through there. And it had to. I mean, we're under the gun as far as the water service lines go. Correct. We have to a certain. That's level. right. We have, to, we have to achieve 206 over a 20-year period, and through this program, we're addressing 124. Uh, programs. So if we were to get additional funding, potentially, Mayor, we would maybe look at roads that didn't um, have as many water service leads, but we're, we're still in uh, need of some type of form of rehabilitation and try to allocate those resources in those directions. Done and going through, and James, you can pipe in on this too. I think we're putting every available dollar that we have. I mean, we're throwing some into the fund balance, but everything else that, that's available, we're putting putting into the roads. Is that fair to say? That's a, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when you hit on it um, earlier, this is you know, this plan is, is being presented with what I would consider fairly static funding right now. Um, this is utilizing basically a snapshot of, of our funding now and how we can reasonably assume it's going to be over the next 10 years this takes nothing into account any additional funding okay with the um so with the amount of money that we get from the state coming in the form of from the from the gas tax i don't think that that has a possibility of being being reduced correct if they run into budgetary constraints due to covid next year well it would it would typically only be reduced um, if people weren't driving. So if there's a lack of collection, just to us. So it's because of everybody being shut down for a period of time and um, people weren't driving from to work, they were working remotely and such, that could have an impact for a little bit of the cash as we move forward. It potentially could. Um, we, we didn't realize that large of an effect during the, the major shutdown that happened during spring. Okay. I'm just just throwing that uh, throwing that out there. Those were my concerns. Uh, open it up to the floor from council. Through the chair, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I know that I've asked this before, but I don't remember, so I'm going to ask again. If you could just remind me, please what the lifespan is of a, of a concrete road and then the lifespan of an asphalt road. Yeah, it's, it's typically the, life, the lifespan of a concrete road should be uh, at least 30 years. That's what it's, and then, um, but I will preface that, that there has to be uh, intermediate maintenance done during that 30 years. And joint sealing is where we go through and you remove the tar from the roads and then you reapply the tar to prevent the water from coming into the roads through there. And um, the life cycle of an asphalt road is generally in the range of 15 to 20 years. So there's a, there's a bit of a, uh, a difference of a 10 to, 10 to 15 year gap between the two. Um, and again, the, the asphalt road will need to intermediate maintenance as well. You can get some uh, cracking through the road, like an asphalt road, and then that should be sealed. But it doesn't really impact the rideability of the road, and the road still maintains its structural integrity. Uh, I will tell you, uh, Councilwoman, that the roads that we build today um, 
are on a, have an aggregate base, which means that they're, they're on stone. And when water gets in there, the stone, the water comes away through the stone to the storm sewer system. And the older roads uh, didn't have that. Uh, the concrete was a little bit different, but um, that's, that's the life cycle of the, both of those. Thank you. And then if you could please explain to me what soft costs are. Because I, I see that cost on not not only the road uh, construction, but also on the on the water part of it. Yeah, that's all the kind of all non-construction costs. So that's engineering, legal, bonding, and all of those types of costs through there. Uh, and we 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 generalize that at ten percent because uh, some of the projects require like a removal and reconstruct requires a lot of in-depth engineering. Uh, out and then obviously with the bond issuance we have bond council we have uh, the financial consultant that uh, that sells the, the bond uh, on the market for us and there's the, those costs are all wrapped up into that thank you and one more question I, I had the same concern that mayor voiced about the act 51 money so what time of year do we normally see that that actually comes through monthly. Um, oh, it does? Yeah, it comes through. And I think what uh, the state of Michigan did, uh, is, as James mentioned, when there was a shortfall from the COVID, I think they took some of the money from the CARES Act and gave it to the communities so there wouldn't be much of a difference. There was a real concern that we were really going to see a dip from the lack of uh, gasoline consumption through there. And so the numbers that we're seeing are averaging. And uh, going forward in 22, the fact that it's, it's indexed to the CPI is a very good thing for us. It's a good thing for all the communities that, that we should be able to count on it as a relatively uh, solid baseline. Thank you. Anything further from, um, from council? Uh, through the chair, Your Honor, if you don't yes, mind. Yes, sir, go ahead. This is Councilman Salcedo. Just a quick question. Under the road fund subtotal for the year 23, 24, and 25, it's all identical where it says water main reconstruct 0.50 miles, lead services reconstruct 42 each, water main resurface 1.33 miles, lead service resurfacing 159 each. In 23, 24, and 25, all those um, statistics are the same, yet the prices to the right are different. The only thing that struck me, for instance, lead service reconstruct 42 each, 230,000 in 23, and in 24 it's only 90,000, and then back in 25 it's 200,000. So can someone just explain that briefly to me? What am I missing? I believe we, these are based off of a technical memorandum that we put together we shared and we presented in more uh, viewer friendly than, than all these detailed spreadsheets in a sense and i think we got copy error issue although the numbers are right the the dollar amounts are right but the portions may be uh, have to be revisited councilman so, right, so you see where I'm coming at, then, right? So no, I do. I, I, as I was going through that, I noticed that myself. Um, but we didn't want to present this technical spreadsheet because it, it gets a little bit in the weeds, if you know what I mean. And you can, we wanted to present it more graphical. So we'll we'll address that and, re, and reissue it with a new issuing date, uh, councilman, so that. We go through that so that right. numbers are. Thank you very much. And like the mayor said, if this could be uh, explained in City Hall somewhere, that'd be great. Yeah, we can certainly do that. Anything, anything further for for, for Hennessy's on their report? Okay. Now, hearing none, then um, thank you all for for that. I would ask uh, John, Jim, if you would hang through um, 
the meeting for, for the rest of it and uh, when we open it up for uh, citizen communication a little bit later on in case there's a question there. <coughs> All right. Then um, we have something for us to uh, to uh, take action, I, I guess, or for for discussion. It has a, a cover letter from um, Don Kazu, our DPS director. And in background, it's audio concrete construction of Milford, Michigan was the first of Lincoln Park's concrete section contractor for the work of 2019 and 2000 construction seasons was the contractor. They have offered to extend their contract unit rates from 2019 contract to the 2021 construction season. JV Cement Contracting Company of Brownstown, Michigan was a City of Lincoln Park cement contractor for the Road Creek construction program for the 2019 and 2020 construction seasons. They have offered to extend their contract unit rates from 2019 contract year uh, to the 2021 concrete uh, construction season. Hutch Paving Incorporated of Warren, Michigan was the City of Lincoln Park's paving contractor for the asphalt resurfacing program phase two work for the 2019 and 2020 asphalt seasons. They have offered to extend their contract and unit rates from the 2019 concrete to the year to the 2021 season. So the resolution that uh, goes with this is that be it resolved that the Mayor and City Council hereby approve to extend the present low read 2019 unit rate contract for audio con concrete construction in Milford, Michigan for the 2021 construction season. Be it further resolved that the Mayor and City Council hereby approve to extend the present low read 2019 unit rate concrete contract for JV Cement Contracting Company of Brownstown, Michigan for the 2021 construction season. Be it further resolved that the Mayor and City Council hereby approve to extend the present low rate 2019 unit rate contract for Hutch Paving Company of Warren, Michigan for the 2021 construction season. So. I move. Support for discussion. Okay. Do we have, uh, Carrie, did you get the mover and supporter? I did. Thank you. Okay. Councilwoman Breeding, go ahead. I just, since Councilman Higgins is not here, I have to ask, and I know what the answer is going to be, but these three companies, I want to make sure that John Kazoo is was pleased at their work, that there were no problems, and they finished the work as they were supposed to. He would ask it if he was here. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Mayor, John Kizu, if I could uh, please yes, respond. Go ahead. Go ahead. All three of these contractors, this, uh, the 2019 construction season, 2020 construction season, uh, have been the best contractors that uh, I work with in the city of Lincoln Park. I think that they've done uh, an exceptional job, and I don't know if anybody knows, but I'm sure Mr. Kurzan and Mr. Hennessy could probably verify this. This past construction season was the best season that I recall not having citizen issued uh, problems out there. I thought they've done an, they've done an exceptional job. Very good. Thank you. Through the chair. Well, yes, just um, just a moment. I'll get right back to you. Um, there were some some issues, John, as we were going through this on, on capital with the. Uh, as far as the restoration for the um, the homeowner's front front yard, they were eventually resolved. But I had to to intervene with that. And when it came, yeah, to I, Mayor, I don't disagree. Uh, we did have issues, but the issues I believe have been significantly less than previous years. Right. But you are right. And there the, always will be issues. Well, with um, GV Cement, for instance, it it seemed that. When we allowed the the rate to go through for the uh, in the last year, where we extended from 2019 to to 2020, our contract appeared to be placed in the uh, in the, uh, the back of the back of the list, and the construction wasn't done in a in a timely fashion. 
and they were scrambling at the end of the year in order to get it done. I realize there are some items with, with COVID and, and such, but there were available times when they did not did not do that. Now, are you saying that our, if this is the, going to be the case, that uh, we will be a priority for next year and things will be done on a timely basis? Mayor, uh, I believe with the attachment, there was a letter from GB uh, Cement where they uh, offered to the city that they would hold our 2019 low red unit rates for the 2021 season. And I believe in that same letter, they said that they would uh, jump onto our work in the springtime and they would have everything completed by, I believe it was end of September of 2021, which would be approximately two months before the cold season arrived. Yes, because this year they were into um, December still laying cement. Is that that was correct, right? Yes, sir. Correct. All right, and one more thing before we go on to Councilman Ross. Uh, we have um, James and John from Tennessee Engineering. Are you happy with the work of these three companies and are recommending that these prices be extended? Yes, this is Jim Hoffer. Um, yes, I agree. We agree with your earlier comments. Um, we do have some issues early on with GV Cement where they didn't come in when we really wanted them to. And when John Kazoo and I met with uh, GV Cement, we, we definitely pointed that out to them that we needed a commitment that they would um, they would make uh, Lincoln Park a high priority if we if we agreed to extend their contract or bring that forth to the mayor and council and, and they did and they did commit it in writing for us. Um, House Painting um, who worked on a, um, the asphalt, uh, they, they did an outstanding job. I want to say, I believe they were pretty much, pretty much wrapped up with everything in July. Um, they, and they also agreed that they would make um, the city of Lincoln Park um, a high priority. They'll do, the, they'll do exactly this year what they did last year for us. They'll put us on the top of the list because now they know if, if this does get approved, they know that this work will be forthcoming so they can already schedule it at this point before they start getting new work. And I believe Aria um, has um, conveyed the same um, promises um, to John Kazoo as well. One more question from me. It, you have the 2019 rates. In reality, what um, type of savings are we looking at if we're utilizing, if we go ahead with this, as opposed to the 2000? Uh, in the range of about 5 to 6% savings, Mayor, through there, it's been, inflation has gone up through that, you know, it's kind of tied to this CPI index through there. So five to six percent of the total project would be how much? I'm not a math major. There, just the funding range of twenty-one to twenty-five percent. Twenty-one to twenty-five. So roughly looking, roughly a hundred thousand dollars anyway. Yeah, a hundred thousand dollars through there, yeah. And this uh just to the road work, you know, we had the water main work and I, it obviously that goes off a little bit as well. Okay, so with this though, if council were to approve this um, this tonight, I would say that for the 2022 would be something where we definitely would need to go out for for bids for. I mean, we don't. Yeah, I think I think in this, you, you know, 21 program is a little bit of a carryover from the 2020, to be honest as well, because we love to save a little bit of money because we weren't really sure what was going to happen with COVID. Yes. Through there, and so I think 22 is a natural break point to rebid all these projects back out every year. 
Okay, and who was it? Was it Councilman Ross that, that wanted to be heard next? Or yes, Your Honor. Okay, go ahead. Just as important as um, projects being finished on time, I'd like to know respectfully if the three companies finished with, uh, within budget. Yes, they, they did. We, we had the unit prices. The only thing that would change in the budget is the amount of water being worked that, that was proposed. We had a lot more um, light service leads that we did this year. So, uh, uh, but they held the prices. So, yeah, I mean, um, all of them did work within budget. They yeah, all projects came within budget. But we, but we did add a few service leads because we came across that. And they held their unit pricing for that and didn't request additional funding um, in increasing unit costs or anything like that. Okay. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. The further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, then um, clerk, call the roll. Councilpersons Ross? Yes. Tobin? Maureen, you're muted. You're muted, Maureen. <laughs> Reading? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Salcido? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Okay, then we. Move now to uh, citizen communications. If anyone would like to address the mayor and council, James, if you could unmute our visitors. Anyone wish to, ad to address council? All right. Um, Hearing none, then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So far. All right. Court call the roll. Councilperson Salcido? Yes. Tobin? Yes. Reading? Yes. Dupre? Yes. Ross? Yes. And Mayor Carnes? Yes. Meeting adjourned. Um, thank you. Uh, have we got two? John, James from uh, Hennessy, John Gazoo for putting this together. And 652.